Hi guys, Ali Duzette here, and I don't have very long. I have to go to parent-teacher conferences very shortly, but I wanted to talk quickly about uh, Leos and Aquariuses and what they can kind of expect from this eclipse portal that we are currently going through. As a reminder, we had an eclipse on April the 30th. Uh, it was a new moon solar eclipse, and then this eclipse portal is closing up on May 16th, I think, and um, with, a, with a lunar eclipse on the full moon. And eclipses always come in sets of two or three. And when they do, the first one unzips everybody's energy field. All of our energy is, you know, open for spiritual downloads. Okay, this is a two-week period where everybody in the whole world has this big invitation to step up their game, uh, energetically speaking. Most people don't take the universe up on that but some people do and you are one of those people i'm sure because you're watching this video of course like and subscribe if you are interested in this kind of thing but um but okay this eclipse portal uh, took place on the scorpio and taurus axis so i'm going to share my screen with you this is my uh this is the current transits and i was so pleased to pull this up and um, see that everything was just right to make this video right this minute at 1.29 p.m. in Springville, Utah. Um, so, so, okay, these are the nodes, one and two, and this is why this eclipse took place on this axis. This is Scorpio, and this is Taurus, okay? And I just did a video yesterday about what Tauruses and Scorpios can expect from this eclipse portal and the, the current transits that are happening right now. But today I wanted to talk about what Leos and Aquariuses can expect from it. Okay, this is Leo. The Leo over here, it's a lion with a mane. Can you kind of see that? Over here is Aquarius. And it's water, as you can see. And even though it's Aquarius, it has aqua in it, Aquarius is an air sign. It is not a water sign, even though its glyph is literally of water. The picture that goes along with Aquarius is of a person holding a jar of water and the water is flowing out. And the meaning of that with Aquarius is that Aquarius is the water bearer. It's an air sign that holds space for emotions without getting necessarily personally involved. So, um, you know, especially water signs. Well, of course, water signs, water is emotions. In a chart, water is about your feelings. Aquarius holds space for people's feelings, but it itself is a little bit more dispassionate. Um, and, and so Aquarius is the sign that's associated with the planet Uranus. That's this guy. And you see how he has these uh, big ears on the side of his head. He's listening to spiritual insight that's coming in by surprise. Uranus was discovered in 1781 right in between the American Revolution and the French Revolution. And so Uranus and Aquarius both have that really revolutionary energy. Aquarius suns, like if you have, if you were born during Aquarius season and you have an Aquarius sun, or if you have an Aquarius moon, or if you have an Aquarius rising, you're going to have that real flavor of rebellion, of revolution. Uh, you may feel big feelings, because Aquarius is that water bearer, but you're going to feel them in a different way than a typical water sign. You're going to feel them in a more active way, in a more mental way, okay? Aquarius is the sign that's associated with um, humanitarianism. So looking at problems in the world, feeling really upset about them. So that's the feelings, the water bearer, but the water bearer doesn't just feel the feelings. It holds space for the feelings and does other things too. So that's when you see, um, you know, just your typical revolutionary sort, they see something unfair, it riles them up and then they go and take action and they go and talk to other people. And the Aquariuses are the ones that are knocking on the doors and saying, why don't you care about world hunger? Why aren't you doing more about world peace? Aquarius energy wants to save the world. Um, and it does it in a, in a revolutionary way, in a, in a, um, not necessarily a thoughtful way, but like a thinkful way, if that makes sense. It can be a, a thinky, I feel like the word thoughtful kind of um, has this connotation of like emotional, like a cancer 
is thoughtful. Cancer moons, cancer suns are thoughtful. They're like thinking about you. How can I help you? And Aquarius is thoughtful in the sense that there's a lot of thoughts that are going on there. It's not necessarily emotional thoughts. It's not necessarily like loving thoughtfulness, but it's like strategically thinking about how am I going to save the world? These are all the thoughts that I have to do. The thoughts about what to do about all the feelings that I'm channeling through my space. Um, interestingly, I read this um, once upon a time somewhere that if you have Aquarius rising, then you likely had an explosive birth. And I will be interested to hear if that's true for you. Um, I looked it up and my older brother, who was born severely and multiply disabled with a horrifically traumatic birth, Aquarius rising. And then I have a daughter who um, I went into labor at 615. She was on my floor in the living room. Um, at 625, cord wrapped around her neck. It was fine. We just unwrapped it, but I was basically alone. <laughs> My husband walked in, kicked off his shoes, flipped his tie and caught the baby. And she's an Aquarius rising. And her birth was an Aquarius birth. And her, you know, life path so far has been quite Aquarius. She does whatever she wants and no one can stop her. And that is kind of the essence of Aquarius. I will do whatever I want and you cannot stop me. Um, over here is Leo again, and Leo is uh, the charming star of the Zodiac, right? I always compared Leo to Simba from the Lion King, which is perfect. Leo the Lion, Lion King. Um, Leo loves the spotlight. Well, let's talk about the Lion King. Simba uh, starts off the show with... Um, he just can't wait to be king, okay? And he loves mischief and he loves fun. He loves fun so much. It gets him into trouble. His dad ends up dying. He doesn't want to deal with his issues. So he runs away. He goes and embraces the Hakuna Matata lifestyle, which is, you know, it can be a little bit Leo. And he is happy to ignore his problems and just have some fun until who shows up but Nala. Can you feel the love tonight? Because I can. Simba feels the love tonight. That spark of romance inspires him. And he decides he's going to step back into his role as the true leader of the Pride Lands. He comes back. He fights Scar. He wins. Spoiler alert. Sorry, my friends. And uh, at the very end, the heavens themselves part and it rains and the drought is over because even the heavens acknowledge Simba is the king. He is the king. And so that is the arc of Leo. You know, in its healthy state, uh, Leo is super responsible. This charismatic leader, it's, um, you know, even the heavens agree. Like the lion is the king of the jungle, you know? You step into your rightful place and the drought ends, right? Um, in an unhealthy space, it's really fun, but fun to a fault. Um, irresponsible. I mean, it's all two sides of a coin. Are you being playful? Are you being irresponsible, right? Are you being charismatic? Are you being narcissistic? Um, so Leo, I mean, those are kind of the two sides of Leo, just like Uranus, are you the American revolution or the French revolution? And um, for Leo, yeah, are you the, the good king or the, the like playful jester that's up to no good, you know? So these are kind of the two sides of the coin. Uh, just to continue on Leo a little bit, Leo, um, I always think of Leo as like a feather boa. <laughs> um, it's just a little bit flashy. It's shiny. Um, it really needs your approval. Leos really want your approval. Um, it's important for Leos to be seen as doing the right thing or to be seen as being a good person. Um, and one thing that is extremely hurtful to Leo suns, Leo moons, Leo rising is if they do something and are not acknowledged for it. So please, everybody, the Leos in your life, please acknowledge them. Tell them how great they are. You know, they don't necessarily want to know how much you love them. They want to know how much you admire them. So compliments admiring, telling them how great they are, saying, oh my gosh, look at how much you've done. Wow, I really appreciate that. That goes a long way for Leo. There are other signs of the chart that don't want the attention. I'd say Virgo 
Virgo is really uncomfortable with thanks and like praise in general. I mean, everybody's chart is different because we have all sorts of stuff going on that's going to give each person their individual flavor. But just to say that there are other signs in the chart that do not need your praise and, and admiration, but Leo is not one of them. Leo needs you to admire it. So why am I talking about these two signs right now? And the answer comes down to the square, which is why I decided to record this video in this moment when I run the transits. I have about eight minutes before I have to go. So, um, so this square right here is called a grand cross and it's going from this nodal path on either end over here to this is Saturn in Aquarius and then the ascendant in Leo. But the important thing is just that it creates the square because that's what I really wanted you to see. The point is that everything in astrology comes back to angles, okay? It is geometry, it is math. So right here, this red square is the angle of 90 degrees. So um, 22 degrees of Scorpio is going to be at 90 degrees to 22 degrees of Aquarius, okay? So these form a 90 degree angle, these form a 90 degree angle, these form a 90 degree angle, these form a 90 degree angle. This is what is called a grand cross. And the important thing that you can see is that the, the Scorpio Taurus axis right here with this nodal path squares the Leo and Aquarius axis, okay? Even if there's no planets in there, there is the square energy that's happening with that empty expanse of space. And I'm just gonna add in a few, um, a few more like asteroids and stuff. So that was just, that's just another like five or six little pieces to the chart. But you can see that it adds up to be a little bit more stuff. Um, and the thing is, that's just a small fraction of what is possible to add to a chart. I mean, we could add all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, I mean, let's see if I can just, um, let's see if it will add those. Did it add them? Oh, no, it did not. Anyway, I just tried to add like 15 more, more planets, but anyways, you could fill up the entire chart with different stuff. And, um, and we don't, oh, I mean, we don't have to, um, but the important thing is just because you can't see something I want snack oh. while I'm watching TV. Okay, I'll get you a snack in five minutes. Sorry, guys. I'm doing a video. Do you want to say hi? Morning. Okay, go back and watch your show. Sorry, guys. So um, the point is that even if there's nothing going on there, that area of the chart is getting triggered. So say it's you. Say that it is you. Um, let's pull up. Go in the middle of the chart. Okay, thank you, honey. I will come back. So this is for May 19th, or sorry, May 14th, which is coming up. So this is a whole different chart. And I bring it up because now, now the square is not obvious. But it's, there's still this nodal path that's going across Scorpio to Taurus. And there's not anything going on right here in Leo. But there is the midheaven over here in Aquarius. The important thing to know is because of this nodal path, that square energy is going to be bringing out the tension in whatever is going on in Leo and Aquarius in your chart. If you are a Leo sun, moon, or rising, if you are an Aquarius sun, moon, or rising, you may feel extra stress and tension because of this movement. Even though this movement is taking place in the Scorpio Taurus axis, you might still be feeling some big stuff going on. Okay, because they are at 90 degrees from each other. So let's go back to, oh, it didn't count it, to that current transits. Um, come here, transits. We'll see if it's still making, oh my gosh, see, I tried to add in everything else and now it did work, but, um, but I don't want them up here anymore. So, um, so we'll take them all off. But, um, Okay, so this, this square right here is why, even if you're a Leo or an Aquarius, those other things are going to be triggered uh, during this eclipse portal in particular. 
So this kind of a cross is called a grand cross. And this is a fixed grand cross because um, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius are fixed signs, which means that they are just kind of more stubborn. They don't, they're not as changeable, okay? The mutable signs would be Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, and they are always letting go of stuff and shifting and changing. Um, they, those are the signs of ending. Uh, Aries, Cancer, uh, Libra, and Capricorn are cardinal signs, and they're getting things started. So they're also changing a lot because they're starting a new thing, starting a new thing. So we have the cardinal signs that are starting a new thing, the mutable signs that are letting go of an old thing. And then we have these fixed signs. And these are the ones that are being the most triggered by this transit right now. And so. Do we have a single show? Okay, give me two more minutes. No, one what? more minute. Okay, one more. Okay, hold on, Nini. Um, so, anyway, all the Leos and Aquariuses in your life and in your chart are going to be experiencing this kind of um, tension. And the message of that kind of tension is to um, deal with where you're stuck in your life. This deals with issues of stuckness, okay? So if you are a Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, or Scorpio, where are you feeling stuck? And where is that being brought to your attention right now because of organic situations that are magically showing up in your life? That is the question of this eclipse portal that's that we're going through right now um, that will end on May 16th. We're all going through this portal and it's giving us this opportunity to have a bunch of organically showing up situations all at the same time. Everybody in the world is dealing with it. Uh, and it's here to bring our attention to, especially what is being stuck in the mud uh, in the areas of our lives with Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, and Leo. So super quick recap before I go, um, Taurus is going to deal with things like land, money, stuff, value, self-esteem, what's coming up for you in those areas. Leo is going to be dealing with, um, are you being valued by others? Do you feel shiny? Are you putting yourself first? Are you allowing yourself to shine? Uh, and also that deals with children, children romance, okay? The Nala and can you feel the love tonight? Can you feel the love tonight? Those are issues that if you're uh, got stuff going on in Leo, they might be triggered right now. This is Scorpio dealing with sex, death, birth and rebirth, um, transformations, inheritances, uh, DNA, the hidden things and secrets. Over here is Aquarius dealing with humanitarian impulses, wanting to save the world, um, being an activist, being a revolutionary. Um, it can deal with the internet if you're feeling that extra push to get on your keyboard and be that keyboard warrior for the greater good. Um, so those are all things that may be triggered right now, especially if you have stuff going on in your chart at Aquarius or Leo. So for example, if you have, if you have Saturn in Aquarius, um, that could be triggered by this axis right here. And the message for that would be for you to dig into your issues of mastery around the internet, around humanitarianism. Um, it could invite you to work on your daddy issues. Okay. If you had something like say Mercury in Leo in your natal chart, that might go off and be inviting you to learn how to communicate and present yourself in a really competent, beautiful, shiny way that draws people's attention. You might be called to deal with your feelings of comfort or discomfort around attention from other people. Um, so those are just a few examples of that. If you have Leos and Aquariuses in your life right now, um, give them a hug, tell them you love them, appreciate them and admire them, and they will really appreciate that. This eclipse portal is, you know, it's crazy for everybody because that's just the territory, but especially for Scorpios and Tauruses, and then secondarily, especially for Leos and Aquariuses. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Of course, um, like and subscribe for the daily work that goes with this eclipse portal. I've been putting out a daily video that gives you just quick instructions for how to be shifting your energy field to go along with what's happening right now. Of course, come and join me on Facebook at Intuitive Healing with Ali Duzette. 
and I will love to hang out with you and get to know you better. And it looks like I need to get somebody a string cheese before I hit that parent teacher conference. So I hope that you have a great day.